By late afternoon on October 25, 1944, Japanese naval forces were in full retreat. For the combined fleet, the Battle of Leyte Gulf had been a stunning failure. Having lost four carriers and two destroyers off Cape Engano, Vice Admiral Jisaburo Ozawa's northern force fled north across the Philippine Sea, desperately trying to get out of the range of Admiral William Halsey's carriers. Over 300 miles away, Rear Admiral Kiyohide Shima's southern force was limping back to the Sulu Sea, having been trounced at Surigao Strait, where it had lost two battleships, two cruisers, and three destroyers. And in the middle, Vice Admiral Takeo Kurita's center force pulled back through San Bernardino Strait, retiring from its unimpressive showing at the Battle off Samar. Already, it had lost two cruisers to a submarine attack and the super battleship Musashi, which had been sunk by American carrier planes in the Sibuyan Sea. But these were not the last Japanese ships to go down. As the Japanese task forces made haste, American carrier planes harassed them. Around 11 a.m., 30 TBM Avengers from Task Group 77.4 caught up with a crippled heavy cruiser, Suzuya, which was part of Kurita's center force. After a number of near misses with bombs, one of the American pilots struck Suzuya's torpedo mount, causing its ordnance to explode. With fires raging out of control, Vice Admiral Katsutaka Shiraishi ordered his crew to abandon ship. 400 Japanese sailors managed to escape before Suzuya slipped beneath the waves at 1.22 p.m. Two more heavy cruisers from Kurita's center force went next. Chikuma, which had been damaged at the battle off Samar, stopped dead in the water, unable to make it to San Bernardino Strait. For three hours, a helpful destroyer pulled 120 survivors off the ship, and just in time. At 2.15, Three TBMs from USS Omani Bay caught up with the damaged vessel and dropped torpedoes, scoring three hits. In 15 minutes, Chikuma capsized and disappeared. Later that evening, the badly damaged Chokai also stopped dead in the water. The destroyer Fujinami took on survivors, scuttling the wreck at 9.50 p.m. Next, the Japanese lost another crippled ship, the heavy cruiser Tama which had been part of Ozawa's northern force. Although Tama successfully retreated out of range of Halsey's carriers, it drifted into the crosshairs of an American submarine, USS Jalau, which was out on its first patrol. A little after 9 p.m., Jalau's crew fired seven torpedoes. Tama took two direct hits and exploded. The entire crew went down with the ship. The next to go was the destroyer in Nowaki, a member of Kurita's center force. Prior to dawn on October 26th, Halsey's battleship force caught up with it about 60 miles from Legazbi. Nowaki took gunfire from several American cruisers and then a destroyer, USS Owen, finished it off with torpedoes. Nowaki went down with all hands, including the 120 sailors who'd been rescued from the heavy cruiser Chikuma only hours before. After daybreak, the Americans claimed more success. West of Penang, Kurita's center force was hit by an 80-plane airstrike from Rear Admiral John McCain's Task Group 38.1, which had only recently arrived from Ulithi. At 8.30 a.m., TBMs from USS Wasp, Hornet, and Cowpens attacked from overhead, targeting the light cruiser Noshiro. Noshiro dodged and weaved, but after 20 minutes, it was hit by a lucky aerial torpedo which exploded inside the boiler room, killing over 80 crewmen. Noshiro's captain ordered his crew to evacuate, and his ship sank under a plume of smoke at 11.15. American pilots also claimed another cripple from Kurita's force, the destroyer Hayashimo. Struck in the bow by an aerial torpedo, the crew intentionally grounded their ship in the waters off Semirara Island. At the same time, planes from Task Group 77.4 found the Japanese transport force hiding in the Visayan Sea. TBM Avengers and FM-2 Wildcats from USS Natoma Bay, USS Marcus Island, and USS Manila Bay attacked the transport force's two escorts, the light cruiser Kinu and the destroyer Yoranami. Kinu suffered three bomb hits, and Yoranami suffered two, and they too 
were both abandoned. Finally, a squadron of U.S. Army Air Force B-24 Liberators caught up with a crippled light cruiser from Shima's task force, the Abukuma, near the island of Negros. It was dead in the water from a torpedo strike, and now it made an easy target. The B-24 crewmen scored three hits, igniting the torpedo magazine, sending it under with over 250 of its crew. Altogether, the Japanese had lost 26 warships and 300 aircraft. Over 12,000 of their sailors and aviators had perished. In terms of the human cost, it had been Japan's worst naval defeat, four times as many as had perished at the Battle of Midway or the Battle of the Philippine Sea. And now, without oil, the Japanese fleet was virtually finished. Admiral Ozawa later explained, After this battle, the surface forces became strictly auxiliary. The great Imperial Navy, once the master of the Pacific, was all but finished. By contrast, the U.S. Navy had lost only six capital ships, the light carrier Princeton, the escort carriers Gambier Bay and St. Lowe, the destroyers Hull and Johnston, and the destroyer escort Samuel B. Roberts. One PT boat had been lost and a submarine, USS Darter, had run aground. American losses numbered about 3,000 men one quarter of the Japanese casualties. The Battle of Leyte Gulf's most immediate consequence was that it allowed the American liberation of the Philippines to move ahead uninterrupted. The Sixth Army's invasion of Leyte was only six days old. The fighting on the island would finally conclude on the last day of December, 1944. By the time it was all over, over 3,500 American soldiers had been killed and more than 79,000 Japanese had perished, either from combat, disease, or starvation. As this campaign wrapped up, MacArthur pushed the 6th Army and the 8th, which came after it, to other major islands, Mindoro on December 15th, then Luzon on January 9th, then Palawan on February 28th, then Mindanao on April 17th, and then Panay, Cebu, and Negros after that the American steamroller could not be stopped. For the U.S. Navy, another consequence emerged over time, a discontinuation of the Navy's planned operation against Formosa. Part of the compromise struck by Douglas MacArthur and Chester Nimitz at the Honolulu Conference in July 1944 had involved the implicit understanding that the U.S. Navy would get to turn its attention to Formosa. But now, with the Philippine liberation underway, Formosa could not be taken, at least not until new service units could be mobilized, and that appeared unlikely until at least after the war in Europe had reached its conclusion. Further, with Japanese offensives in East China currently hurling back Allied troops, the Joint Chiefs realized that the Americans needed to secure the Philippines now more than ever. If the Army's Air Force crews were to stand a chance at damaging Japan, they needed to be sure that the airfields in the Marianas Islands couldn't be attacked from the Philippines. As it was, the Joint Chiefs had already devised a new mission for the Pacific Fleet. Once Vice Admiral Mark Mitcher's fast carriers could be freed from the Philippines, they would help seize the islands of Iwo Jima and Okinawa. In short, the Battle of Leyte Gulf charted a new course in the Navy's Pacific strategy. The Battle of Leyte Gulf also saved MacArthur's Sixth Army from defeat. It seems unlikely that the Japanese counterattack would have captured it or even doomed it, but if the U.S. Navy had not been successful, it would have changed the timetable for the liberation of the Philippines. In turn, this would have altered the timetable for the end of the war. It is more concrete to say that the U.S. Navy performed spectacularly in the 20th century's largest naval battle. Despite the controversy surrounding Admiral Halsey's decision to leave San Bernardino Strait unguarded, the 3rd and 7th fleets turned out a stunning performance. Every element of the fleet had a part to play. U.S. submarines had given the fleets an early warning at Palawan Passage. The U.S. carrier pilots had taken down the unsinkable Musashi and then savaged Ozawa's carrier force. The American surface ships had won a stunning night battle at Surigao Strait. The tin cans of Taffy 3 had deterred Korea's center force at the battle off Samar. 
The smaller ships came to the rescue of the beleaguered carriers Princeton and St. Lo. From the smallest PT boat to the grandest battleship, from the lowest seaman to the highest admiral, the Battle of Leyte Gulf had been a group effort. Victory at Leyte Gulf was a cooperative effort. 